So hi, I'm Jackson and I'm going to teach you how to build a computer. So before we get right into the build, I do want to mention that your parts will probably be different to the parts that I am using and that this is just a general guide. I do recommend reading all manuals before building your system just in case there's a process that is different. All right, so here's our parts. I'm going to go through some of them. We have a Ryzen 2600 for our CPU on an Aorus B450 Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. We also have a 1 terabyte Intel 660p NVMe drive. Here we have a Asus Dual 1070, perfect graphics card for the job. We also have a Corsair RM750X. Also we're going to be having a 2 terabyte Seagate Barracuda for our mass storage. Here we have our radiator. It's gonna it's a water 3.0240 ARGB sync from Thermaltek. And to the left of it, we've got a free pack of pure 12 ARGB fans from Thermaltek. We're gonna be doing this in a push-pull config. And here is our case. It is a Thermaltek Commander C31 Snow ARGB edition, I believe is what its full name is. So, yep, that does our part selection. I'll have the whole parts list down in the description. Here we have our tools. Not necessarily all of them will be needed, but in a general sense, these are the tools that you could be in need of. Firstly, we have some zip ties and Velcro ties just to tie down cables. They'll come in handy later. After these, we have our thermal paste. Next, we have uh, any static wrist strap. This is so that you can prevent static electricity. Also, all of these are on a anesthetic mat. Again, same deal, and protect your table. What we're showing now is some scissors, pliers, snips, so that you can cut the ends of zip ties. Be very handy. An assortment of screwdrivers or a bitted screwdriver will come in very handy, as some screw sizes need a different size a bit. And that's pretty much it. So we'll get to the build. The build will be in time lapse and I'll try and explain the process. Let's get to it. All right, first things first, motherboard. Take out its packaging, put it on the box, throw the plastic away. Next, we're going to lift the pin up, put the CPU in. There'll be a triangle on the CPU and on its socket that it goes in that you have to line up. Next, the RAM. You have to pull the tabs down and just slot them into to the correct slots. Do check your manual. Same thing with the lighting enhancement kit. Now for the M.2, we'll take off the heatsink, put in the M.2's standoff, screw it, the, screw it in, and then screw the heatsink back on. Now to the case. Lie down on the side, motherboard tray facing up. And I'm just going to remove this bracket down here as it may get in my way. And just put the motherboard in and screw it in. If you have an IO shield, do put that in before you put your motherboard in. And make sure it's around the right way. Now I'm going to remove the fan as I'm going to be replacing it. And here I am putting in the new fan. Okay, with that done, I am removing the back fan as I'm replacing it, and then I'll put the new fan in. Do check on one of the sides of the fan. There will be arrows to determine where airflow is. Do put the fan around the right way for where you want the air going. There I am putting in the cable extension for the CPU, and routing the fan cables to the back of the case. Now for the radiator, I'm going to install the fans that are going to be pushing air through the radiator first as I'm doing a push-pull config. So again, making sure that I have the, firstly, it all on the right side, and secondly, making sure that the airflow is going the correct way by checking for the arrows. Next, I'm going to apply thermal paste. I'm applying it in a line for the CPU. You can also do it as a dot in about a size of a P. Next, after getting the pulling fans ready, they aren't screwed in yet. As I go screw into the radiator, I will attach the 
CPU block to the CPU mount as described by the manual and then I'll screw the fans into the radiator so that the radiator stays put all right now I'm attaching some of the cables putting them around the right way they can only go in one lane all right now for the power supply I'm going to screw the bracket on as this case has a power supply bracket and then before I put the power supply on I'm going to put all the cables in that I need and then route it through the back like so so that it's actually easier to manage the cables and attach some of the cables to their extensions next we'll be getting the hard drive ready first because I don't see the point in having them in I'm going to take out the mounts that I don't need and then I'm going to take out the mount that I do and then attach the hard drive to it using its screws put the mounts back on and then hook it all up now we've got a cable mess at the moment so just trying to organize it all to make it a bit easier all right so here I'm doing putting the fan splitter cable in fan cables have a foolproof design they can only go in one way to their spots then I'll put in the ARGB extension cable in and plug in all the front I.O. including the USB ports here is the front I.O. do check your manual as to what is what there is a right way and a wrong way also on the front I.O. cables there should be an arrow on the back of the each connecting point and off by memory that is for the positive wire so just put them in the right spot just like so and it should all be good all right so next a graphics card here we go trying to put in the mounts realize that it isn't gonna work because there's white brackets so I take it out and just install a GPU in the native vertical mount that the case has all right, so here is what I've done for the cable management. I've actually put the 24 pin cable extension behind the fan controller and I've zip tied all the cables up to the tie down points. You'll see little knobs. I've tried to keep all the cables behind the motherboard tray just to hide them all to the best of my ability. This is all going to probably be changed in the future, but that there's a general conception for cable management. Don't be afraid to stuff cables down with the power supply in the power supply shroud it's a great way of finding cables and other than that, that there's the build done so let's get to the b-roll So now I'm finished with the build. I did have some problems. I've got it running at the moment, but I did have some problems. One one of the fans I've got in the pull part of the pull, push pull config of the radiator is not spinning. It's lighting up, but it ain't spinning. So I've got no idea what's happening there. Um, I couldn't get the front fans to light up when connected to the motherboard for some reason. So I'm working on that. Also, I got all the 120mm fans, including the one that's not connected to the radiator, well, that's not part of the radiator configuration, as well as the CPU block on the radiator, all connected to each other for the RGB. And through Gigabyte's software, it's been a bit funny for some reason. Pouring it all to you. So yeah, as you can see, it's all purple. On the motherboard it's all selected as purple, but for some reason, to get purple on the fans and CPU block, I've had to select it as yellow or orange, somewhere in between. One last thing is that the case for where the graphics card was going to go for the vertical mount has these white slots that would impede on getting any form of video audio out cable into the graphics card. So, in a follow-up video down the track, I'm going to pull everything out and mod the case. I'm going to cut those white bits out so I can put 
this vertical mountain. And because of all that, when I got to the cable management side, I didn't worry too much because I'm going to have to pull it all out. So the cable management is all right, it could be better. So when I put the system all back together after I mod the case and replace this fan, I'm going to make sure the cable management is spot on. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the build. It runs fine, get these couple of things all sorted, and then it will be perfect. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you like this video, click that like button. If you want to see more content by me, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell notification while you're there so you get notifications when I upload the next video. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video. See ya.